Hi everybody, Thursday again. Welcome back and hope you're all well and healthy. Um, this week, um, the subject is going to be painting transparent surfaces or substances and uh, ellipses, pesky ellipses. Um, last week, I, the, the subject was uh, being more interpretive, and I was very happy with how that came out, and, and it's kind of a direction that I I think I want to move more, and, and uh, so I'm going to kind of continue with that here, um, particularly since, hi, Cindy, hi, Carol, um, particularly since uh, it seems like the world of watercolor is moving towards a tighter, more photographic projected image kind of thing. And I want to kind of move in the other direction, not so much because I'm contrarian or, or like that. It's just that I feel like, well, we got to, there's plenty of that and they're doing good at it. I, I, I want to do something else, kind of like an antipasto or something like that. But um, I reshot the original image. I think, what, what was our, oops, original. I guess I don't have it up here. The white one. Um, got a cleaner glass. <laughs> and with a red wine and, and a red background here with my uh, uh, 1940s, very well-worn countertop. Uh, it's... Well, we'll explain it later. The whole trick to tr painting something transparent is essentially, hi, Becky, you're, you're basically painting the background that you see through the transparent substance, glass or water or something like that. And then you just um, account for um, any difference in, in the background uh, that is added by the substance. Hi, James. So, and that's easy. You just look through, or you look right next to each other. You say, is this red and that red, it's the same surface. Are they the same? No, this is a wee bit darker. It's a wee bit duller. Hi, Judy. Hi, Kathy. Um, and this is more vivid and, and more red. So you just, uh, it, very simple, actually, um, do that. And then, then the thing that makes it look like the stuff is the little highlights and dark, the dark spots like that. And the light spots like this they basically become these sort of little fingernail eyelash shaped highlights or darks that are superimposed on top. So uh, the darks, obviously, since we work light to dark, you can apply the darks uh, later on and then deal with the edge quality. And, and we've treated that before. The lights, there's a lot of ways you can get there. Uh, the most obvious way would be to paint around them, which is not always the easiest thing to do. The more complex the thing, and if you want to get the ellipse looking elliptical, then uh, painting around it is, is, is a little bit tough and white knuckle stuff. Uh, another way is you could do a resist. Uh, you could use the white china marker, and if you know that it's going to be white and not, say, orangey pink or something, um, then you can do the whites. Um, because this, once you put that down, um, you can't get it any more paint on top of it. So another thing you could use is an, is an oil pastel, a white oil pastel. Um, you could, um, lift them, uh, particularly if you'll notice I've chosen one with a lot of rich colors here. There's going to be a lot of pigment on there, so we're going to be able to lift quite nicely. Uh, the other thing you could do is uh, use uh, the you know good old white gouache uh, and pick them up that way because they're such tiny little marks. 
I kind of like doing that in a context like this, maybe especially for something like that or that, because it will have a actual physical forward uh, character and which is what the reflection is. It's the point on the object that is sending the most light back to us. Hi, Diane. Hello. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, the transparent surfaces in a nutshell. You're painting the background and you're adding the highlights and the darks and you're adjusting for any influence that the surface or the material uh, exerts between the difference between it and the background. So there's that. Um, it's very, very easy to do in opaque mediums, oils, pastels, things like that. Um, it, it's a little trickier in watercolor, but it's not impossible. And it's not really one of the, it's not the hardest thing you can do in watercolor. So, um, I like, oh, just to share with you a fun little quote from, uh, uh, a, a Dutch painter who I like to watch, Titus Muse, uh, on YouTube. Very interesting guy. Uh, he paints both in watercolor and oil. And he uh, he says that uh, oil paint is that kid who listens to its parents. And watercolor is that other kid um, who goes its own way. But uh, if you allow them and, and, and guide them without forcing them, uh, they usually wind up going wonderful places. So just to throw that in. Now, ellipses. Oh, wait, what I should show you. Yeah, let me just illustrate, actually. Uh, like we have a, 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 a background here. Uh, maybe we'll have... Um, essentially, there's these little boom, boom, it started, look at that, it's already starting to look transparent. Uh, a little extra dark there, strong dark here. So, boom, boom, there it is. Um, that's the whole trick we're trying to do. Now, the ellipses. Okay, that's where it gets... Folks tend to have trouble with that. So the trick with ellipses, because we're dealing with actually cylinders and circular objects. The thing we have to remember is that whatever part of that cylinder... And, you know, this is a tapered cylinder, but that doesn't change it. Let's say this is a cylinder. There's the two sides. At eye level, if we were holding that glass up to us ourselves at eye level, uh, well, let's make, it, let's make it a wine glass, okay? that's going to be a straight, flat line. The further up you go, it's because you're on top. You're going to see this. And below, you're going to see kind of the same. So about equidistant from eye level, your ellipses will be the same width. Okay, now, let's look at a more extreme kind of situation. Let's say that this is a, a little further away, eye level. As we get As we can look down on it, we can see more of the circularity of it. 
So remember, equidistant from eye level, your ellipses are going to be about the same width. Now we're not going to get into anything that tall. Uh, we're probably going to be more in this range here, except we are looking down on that stem. So eye level is pro for us is probably about here. And we're seeing more of this and a lot more of this and a little less of that. And if this was a really tall champagne flute or something like that, we might get a different effect. So let's put all that aside. And let's actually start drawing this thing. How do we want to go about that? Um, one easy way to do this is maybe sort of figure out where's our tops and our bottoms, which would be key horizontals. Um, I'm just going to make a light mark to, to indicate that. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to find that stem. Where do I want that? It's kind of centered, um, but that's, you know, if, if you have asymmetry elsewhere, you can get away with some centrality. And we do have some asymmetry up here and that thing going, the reflection going off to the side. So I'm going to make a kind of a note of where the stem is, where it hits. Oh, one thing, another thing that helps is... Uh, Turn that over. <laughs> Look at if it's a square, visualize a square. Where does that come? Is this halfway through that? No, it's a little above. So that means we're going to have a little bit more of that circular bit. over there. So Carol asks what size paper I'm now using. I've got a 11 by 15 sheet uh, here of Hanamula. Uh, uh, looks like rough. Um, that'll allow it to stay wet or longer. Um, and I've shortened it a bit in the vertical so that uh, I'm trying to correspond to the proportions of this rectangle. I set the thing up here drew a diagonal through it, and the diagonal stopped there. So there's that. So, uh, okay, I'm going to start looking for bottom of the glass. That distance is a lot more than that distance. So now I was fiddling around trying to, there is still some photographic distortion on this uh, glass. And I was trying to play around with that. And then I decided, well, let's just illustrate the thing of ellipses by... I'll modify this to what I would like to have seen. It seems a little tall for the actual thing. Hi, Roxanne. Um, so I'm going to... That one's a more cigar-shaped one than this one, which is more of like an egg shape. That's another way of doing it. That's a very wonderful, simple way of doing it. It's just, is it an egg? Is it a cigar? Is it a more of a circle? Yeah, so I've got almost this, I've got a lemon, an egg, and a vitamin D capsule. <laughs> so, but I'm going to flatten it out just a bit. And, and like I say, I enjoyed having some looseness. Um, in the painting that I did last week that I might have before had a tendency to get a little tighter and more precise on it. Uh, 
that circle and that circle are not the same. Coming out at a two o'clock And how perfect do you have to be? Not that perfect. As long as this one's the biggest, because we're looking down, that one's the medium, and that one's the smaller, you're going to get away with it. Anything off of perfect is going to look expressive. Up here we've got a... It's a rice cooker. <laughs> I left it in. Give it a little more stem. I can always erase when it, at this stage because it is a long stem. A wine glass should have a long stem. That's supposed to hold it up here because it warms it. It's supposed to hold it down on the stem. Then over here I've got a, uh, it's actually a knife block. It's the abstract shape. This entire composition is essentially need to get another sheet of paper here. Um, we've got a, a vertical. We've got a diagonal. Running along there. And then we've got a, a nearly horizontal cutting across. So it pays to look for that sort of thing going in. Um, I'm going to be very, very general with those. Uh, they're just going to, they're background, so I'm going to let them be background. Okay, eraser time. Take out anything I'm not really wanting in there. Yeah. And you know what? I think I want to narrow it up just a titch on the right side so that I can just begin to bring, yeah, 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 yeah. I want this to kind of sort of kiss that edge. Why? Um, because I've got something kissing this edge high and to the left. So I want something by way of balancing it, kissing the edge low and to the right. So now, 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 oh, let's see. I need to have a little bit more. And look at that stem, John. Good Lord. It's a cheap glass. Not one of those expensive ones. <laughs> there we go. And that shadow, I'm going to, I'm going to, attempt to paint it. Oh, doggone it. Here we go. Come on back. There we are. Ah, oh, yes. There's a little bit of weirdness up in here. Where it happens, it happens. 
Now, when you're looking through transparent glass, um, jars, vases, that sort of thing, note that that egg shape is not going to come all the way to the edge. It's going to hook in there a bit. Stand back, look at it, say, does it look plausible? <laughs> How are we going to get our highlights? I don't think I'm going to do much in the way of painting around. I don't think I'm going to do resists, either with this or the uh, masking fluid type thing. I, I've never really been a fan of masking fluid. I'm going to go for lifts and gouache because they will be positive marks. And by positive marks, the problem with the, the resists and the uh, masking fluid is that, to my, to my mind, is that where you put it, you're stuck with it. And then you get the other colors in there and you might decide, doggone it, I really wish this was over here or over, you know, wherever. You know, you might have it up too far or over too far or something. Um, if you're putting it on, if you're lifting it away or you're putting on the gouache, then it's exactly where you want and it's a positive mark. It's not a correction. You painted it. Um, so what to think about here. Um, well, uh, a little more. I am going to try to lift, which means I'm going to have to do a little bit of erasing here. Uh, I might paint around that and soften it, those two reflections on the rice cooker there. Um, I'm going to need a lot of red, so let's talk about our colors. I've got, probably won't use this, cad lemon, yellow lemon, yellow ochre. Oh no, that's like a gamboge or something like that. Uh, yellow ochre, orange, uh, quinacridone sienna, burn umber, cad red light, alizarin, uh, quin rose, Wait a minute, no. One of these is quinacridone. Uh, one of them is quinacridone rose. I think it might be this one. And this one is uh, quinacridone. Um, quinacridone coral. Cad red, cad red or naphthol. A... Uh, I believe dioxazine purple. We're going to need some purple because this is a nice uh, uh, mostly Merlot blend. Ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, cobalt turquoise, uh, Prussian, probably won't we'll use that, La Holbein lavender, indigo. I seriously doubt if we're going to use any of that nickel as or yellow. We don't need a green. Okay, big brush because we're going to be doing a wash. Um, the mop, get it good and wet. I am going to try to, and I like the looseness of last week, uh, get some of these colors in there, switch to the red, paint through. <laughs> um, maybe adding color to the left and the right to get the effect of the Red's being a bit more vivid where I'm not looking through the glass. I might try to skip that, but if I can't, what the heck. Um, down here, definitely not going to be able to skip those. I might even need to spray this to get it a little bit wet. Uh, we're on a 45 degree angle. Well, maybe, yeah, a little less than 45. Uh, runny mixes down here, slower moving mixes up there. And a lot of what we did in the Nocturne 
uh, we will be doing here in the in the sense that we will be adding color into a moist or wet surface. So let's get some runny, well it's a ready, runny orangish red. This is the CAD red. Uh, I'm just going to get them set and ready to go. You want it to be fairly rich and creamy because we're going for a rich color here. I don't often paint reds because, you know, landscape or whatever, you don't run into that much of it. So they're nice floral colors. Let's get some of that. That is a quinacridone rose. This is the quinacridone coral. I'm going to get some of that going next to it. Uh, let's see if you can... So you see that's a little more orangey, tomatoey. This is uh, and then I'm going to get some regular rich deep cad red over here. Or it might be nap fall. I'm, I, it, it, it just it doesn't matter. It needs to be that kind of red. A bluish red, a reddish red, a tomato red, an orangey red. As long as it looks like what you need, it's the right color. Reds are, I mean, you notice I'm going just basically straight into them. Reds are, are notoriously, uh, they look vivid on the palette and initially when you apply them, they look vivid, uh, and then they, they lose a bit of their chroma when they dry in watercolor. Not so much in uh, oils. Redder red back here, orangier red, coral red down here. Oh, let's go back to the... <laughs> there we go. Um, Deller grayer red there. Very, very vivid purples and stuff in here. But... I got some... Well, let's just get some indigo. I've got some grays in that stainless steel rice cooker there, but there's also some okay. It's gonna be loose, it's gonna be messy, it's gonna be holy mess stage for quite a long while. And then when those little highlights and lifts and things like that go in, all of a sudden it's kind of like, oh, gee, looks like a glass of wine. Okay. A little bit of red in there, too. There's that, supposedly, that reflection. <laughs> Lost a bit of it. Let's get a little more of the red in there. Some of this is reflecting into the stainless steel thing. I'm going to paint over that reflection, and I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna in this mix as I go to the right and to the bottom. And then I'm just going to get indigo about it. It's very dark over in that corner. Coming down here. Very dark up there. Let's smear, smear, or put into that wet surface 
umber, indigo, let them separate. Now, before it's too late, rinsing, squeezing the water out of the brush, and I'm going to get, try to get a little better reflection. Whoop. Lift that one out. That's a lift. There's water on the surface with the pigment, so we squeeze, rinse the brush, squeeze it out, and we pull that. And because that, what happens is that edge is going to soften. Uh, let's leave that. Now, red, 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 red. Here we go. Let's get that brush wet again, get some red in it. The orangey red. Don't worry if that bleeds a little bit, we're going to get back in there. Here we come with our reds. A little bit of a bead on that, it's waiting for us. I'm going to get back into my indigo and my burn umber. Gonna go to about there. It's a holy mess. It's a holy mess. Lots of the more orangey red. Oh, let's get them all. Keep a bead going. Keep a bead going. Now, while this is wet, I am gonna pack additional creamier red right into that. And it's going to drizzle down on its own. Coming down here. Keeping a bead. Let's actually start getting some orange in this. Particularly on the left side. Uh, a little more of the Napthal Quinacridone Coral into that same puddles over here. I guess you can't really see. Let's see if I can miss a spot there. Ah, what if I don't want it there? We'll see. It's a duller red. I'll we'll put a little lavender in it over to this side. I really want to, I'm rinsing, blotting a little bit. I really want to get orangey coral in this vicinity here. Uh, see, I'm letting that get a little bit too dry. I should be careful. As long as that edge is, is, is reasonably wet. I should be okay. Orange. Let's get orangey right down there. And more coral, maybe even a little bit of a lizard over to the pinky kind of. Well, I could have left that highlight, might have been in the right spot. Okay, now rinse that smaller brush. Uh, Hi, Lisa. I'm going to get that wet, squeeze it out. I'm going to drink up any of that excess it's sort of forming down at the bottom. Uh, it's a little drier up here and a little wetter down there, right? So I'm going to do things up here that I can do because it is drier. Into the indigo. So slow moving. Notice that doesn't run. Uh, burn umber. Indigo. Or, you know, Prussian, your darkest blue. Um, I 
Well, look at that. See, that's dry enough that I can actually even get. So I can go wet or paint. Ah, you can't see it. Doggone it. I'm sorry. There we go. I'm painting this. So you can see it's a dark, but it's a kind of a brownish dark. So I don't need to be that, I guess I don't need to be that dry, so. I want that to be soft there, so hopefully it will happen because it is getting into the wetter portion of the page. Now as I go down here, I'm going to get a little bit of this lavender and slow moving. Notice that does not go anywhere. I'm going to try to render some of that uh, handle of that knife in the block, but I'm not going to try to be too particular in describing it because it's about the glass, not the knife. Burn Umber, Prussian Blue or Indigo. Slow, slow moving here. Oh, I'm getting a bleeding edge there. What can I do to stop that? Let's get some quinacridone coral. Probably shouldn't have done that, John. I want to get some of, again, that mix of, I, I don't care, I'm going to be loose today. That looks too hard edged. Bring some dampness to one side, so let it swim into that area. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. Okay. Various reds and oranges. Hi, Mary. Um, Coming down here, now there's going to be a messy edge here, but that's all right because there's going to be a shadow coming out of there and going across. Now that shadow is kind of violety. Maybe not that. Let's leave that. Let's get a... Coral, a slower moving coral in red and some bit of lavender or maybe a little bit of cerulean. I'm painting the shadow through the glass of the knife block. Let's get some purple in it. Slow moving. I can make that shadow be what I want it to be. I don't have to stay with what is there. I want that edge to be a little more rounded and it's warm so I'm going to get some of this red mix it into that bring it to the side of that rinse the brush blot it 
bring water to it and let it come across. And it'll, by coming across, I mean, I'm bringing water to the left of it so it can swim that direction. Into this area, I can make it very dark. Let's get some indigo and some burn umber. Very, or Prussian even and burnt sienna. Do that. When that gets a little drier, I'm going to put that in there. See, this is still very damp. So look at that. I don't want that, do I? Because we're getting into our wine. She'll pretend those are shadows, or knife shadows. Give them some particular shape. All right, we don't even know what it is. Could be, <laughs> let's paint our wine. That is gonna be a lizard. And I need it pretty creamy and slow moving. And some dioxazine purple or alizarin. I know you're thinking, boy, he's making a mess of this. It's recoverable. It really is, truly. I want that to get a little, it's almost blackish. I'm going to get right into that purple. And that's just almost, almost tube strength paint that I'm putting into a wet surface. Uh, let's get a little cerulean. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm going to put it in there. Again, that's creamy paint into a wet surface. Now, I'm going to blot that brush, not rinse it, blot it. I'm going to get some quinacridone coral or quinacridone rose, and I'm going to touch the edge with this creamy paint to get a redder. I'm going to come just below this. This is almost a gouache consistency here. Uh, let's get a runnier bit. Now, a dull right into this stuff because it's it's like a becoming a neutral color. Well, that's not what I, I want a pinkish pink. Best pink. Coral, fair amount of water, probably over here, down over here somewhere. I've got it. I am going to pull down the stem. Maybe even some of the right side of the glass. What do I want to do? Okay, over here, I need to have a strong. Oh, tube strength indigo burnt sienna. Start that. This needs to get darker. That corner, it's a more or less a triangle. So, oh my goodness, I got a mess over here. Rinse. Blot. Cad red light. Maybe a little runnier than that.
blint, some black. Ah, see, I'm getting a light spot. I shouldn't have done that. So I just need to bring some orangey pinkish. Well, that countertop is, <laughs> if you can see it. I think it was put in in the 40s. Yeah, we need to do this anyway. I need to come down here and get something redder. See what I'm mixing down there. Keep a B going. Now, I am going to paint up to the edge of the stem which is essentially dry. Stop at the base of the glass. Let's put a little bit of purplishness in there because it is going to change. Purplish We lose a bit of it, I'll see what we get. I need to get there, that's drying up too much. Let's get orangey. It will become something, I promise. Now all of that is going to get a little bit dull, and I'm hoping to produce the look of the influence of the glass, looking through glass, two layers of glass maybe, and then, so I'm doing runny paints again, hiding in that, uh, where do I, okay, orange. Orangey. Let's let's get even just straight up orange. This is a light shade of I think cat orange. And here we go. Inside the stem. The base, it's a holy mess right now, and we get pinker down here. Now, let's see, what can I do? That's very wet. I'm going to rinse this brush, squeeze it out, make a shape like that. Let's see if I can start drawing that rim. Rinse. Squeeze. Lift. What I can't get this way. I will get another way. I've got a weird... well no, let's not do that until... Uh, let's get some coral, slowish moving coral. I want to get that halo... oh, and I need to get almost Rip roaring purple with a little bit of lavender through here to grayish kind of quality. Um, 
I rinsed and squeezed. Some of that, perhaps a little too early. When you're doing these kinds of lifts, the put your light, if the light's over here, put your head over here, here if the light's over there. In other words, get the image between you and the light and look for the glisten on top of the paper. If you can see some glisten, there's water on the surface, so that's not a good time to do your lift. It's less gl there's more glisten here because I just painted there. Um, you can really lose that one. Ooh, that's dribbly. I'm going to drink that up. And there's not really much of a highlight there. Dragging that down there like that. Here, let's let's work up there because that's indigo or ultramarine. Well, that ultramarine is kind of dried up. A dark blue, a burnt sienna or burnt umber. Slow, 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 slow moving. So that's the whipped cream on the hot cocoa. It's not moving because it's just softening. It's not changing. Well, doggone it. Don't paint those nice. Oh, look at that. What do we do? Rinse, squeeze, drink carefully, and be thankful that your countertop isn't <laughs> spartanly beautiful and new. I need a little more coral or slowish moving coral or well, maybe the cad red light or the orange in that area. It's a wee bit darker inside the, the base of the glass than outside. Very wet there, so that's probably as much as I can do there. That's glistening, that's glistening. In fact, I should This is what Titus means. The watercolor is that child that doesn't quite listen to its parents. I think I'll take some of the purple. No, not yet, not yet, not yet. Very damp there still. Oh my goodness, look at that. Now that happened because I let it get too wet. And I went in there while it was too wet. So I'm getting relatively dry paint. Still a lot of pain on this, or dampness on the surface there. Hopefully I'll get away with it. Purple. That needs to be very dark. And I think what's causing the problem with this guy 
is there is a supply line that I need to cut off. So I'm going to get a little bit of tissue. Twist it into like a little thing and cut off. And this is Pentagon 101. Cut off their supply line. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting a problem here. I'm just going to touch it and feather it. I want it loose, so I'm going to get loose. But we're going to bring it back. You'll see. Jimmy, how are you? Okay. Yeah, in oil, this would be nothing. But if we let this child that won't listen to its parents go and guide him in the right direction, he may go a wonderful place. I'm going to put a little bit of red into that area. Rinse, squeeze it out. That shadow. Here we go. What do we need? A deep blackish red that moves slowly. So alizarin, I mean quinrose, cad red, painting through the thing because that's We're looking through it. Still very wet here. All right. Something similar to that there. And there. And even there. Do I dare dry it? Just kissing that dark. Okay, coral, or cad red, or even the orange, right to the edge of that. Let's Let's dry this. I would like to let this set.
dry enough. As always, I would really have rather have let that set and do its own thing. Now, a reddish, violetish, but not vivid, more grayish. There. Now I want the left side of that to soften, so I'm bringing water to that side. Very, very still wet there, still very wet there. So I have to be careful. Rinse, squeeze it out, make that like so. We can create our rims. Might even need a smaller one, we'll have to see. There's some reflections coming down there. There is a purplish It's a reddish purplish That's not a color. That's the red is leaking down in there. The purple is leaking down in there and it makes a red violet, which is handy. Now, I need that to soften, so I rinse Squeeze a bit, and I'm going to bring some water to the right of it so it can swim into that. I need a strong light, rinse it good, right about here. And I need some general grayishness there. There's some business, I think it's a reflection of the sink. Here. That needs to be very dark purple, reddish, lizardy, deep purple there. And I need it to get. Reasonably soft, that edge. Oh, John, geez, dribbled some water there. Drink it up. Maybe a little orangey or red somewhere right along there. Maybe let's soften this edge a bit there. And there. And some orangey red. Here and here. I need a dark purplish red here. About 10 o'clock to 7? No, somewhere like that. Maybe redder than that. A cool bluish dark. Let's get some lavender up here. Uh, while we're back, I'm going to glaze that with some of our 
mishmash reds from everywhere. Hello, Lynn. And I'm going to do that over here too. And I'm going to soften the rinse squeeze, bring water to the left of it or to the right of it to soften the edge. a little bit of stronger red. Like so. And even here. Now that reflection there, that needs to be, let's mop that out. A coral or a orangey red, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna to take it down. Burnt sienna is a dull red orange if you think about it. So, where's it going A little purple in it. It might work, it might not. Rounder. Okay, I think that'll work. Not red enough there. Alizarin. There we go. I'm happier with that. A miscellaneous dull purple. Make it less obvious, John, make it less obvious. Some reds. There. Need to have some strong darks up here. So, oh boy, really strong. Burn umber, dioxazine violet, Prussian blue, dioxazine violet. Ah. Really opaque, very, very opaque. And get some red right at that edge. Oh, John, now you gotta bring that into the shadow, don't you?
Okay, okay, that's all of that. <laughs> we're going to get there. We're going to get there, I swear, I swear. Now, here's where we're going to go. I'm going to get a stiff, short brush. Um, rinse it in water, and I'm going to try to... Where's that tissue? Really lift. To the left and the right of that. Oh, geez. Well, all right. It's a dirty glass. <laughs> and now, uh, see, I shouldn't have done that. So how are we going to correct it? Get that strong dark in there. It's a Merlot. And now we're going to get our gouache out and our pointy brush and we're going to get those little specular highlights. That dipping right into the wherever you think you see them. So, let's see a little bit more. There's a, I'm gonna mix a pink of sorts. There's some pinkish reflections here or there. And I think I will leave it at that. So Let's detape and see what we get. Oh, you know, well, okay, wait a minute. It's funny how you detape something and you can all of a sudden see what you wanted. Oh, yeah, Titus is so fun to listen to. Um, it's exceptionally good English, too, for a Dutch guy. Talks a lot about the process of painting and the process of being an artist and when things go wrong. So, and yeah, Becky makes a point that's really the painting a transparent subject. Um, you're basically painting the background and uh, some of the influence of the object. Yeah, there we go. 
I think I need a bit of that back here too. There we go. Glass of, it's a Napa Red Blend. Um, really nice. 2018, it's 61% Merlot, uh, 24 Cabernet Sauvignon, 7% Cabernet Franc, 5% Malbec, 3% Petit Verdot. It's delicious. It's a little bit of oak, um, not inexpensive, something uh, that you drink to remember. This isn't, you don't drink this to forget. <laughs> So, um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, next week, uh, I'm not sure what I want to do, but at some point, I want to do a sunset because a lot of the things that we've been doing sort of work into that, uh, what we need to do for a, a sunset situation. And um, if not, it'll be another project, but we are definitely going to do a sunset or sunrise at some point. So um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And it's always fun to hook up with everybody on Thursday and, and uh, reconnect and uh, stay safe. Stay sane. Oh, good. Yeah, Judy, this will make you go for some good wine and cheese. So with this, um, gosh, nice eat them. <laughs> All righty. Bye-bye, everybody.